Selling stress-free. Well, even the left-wing media is calling her bluff. Kamala Harris is using Donald Trump's border wall, his border wall, in her ads, despite years of opposing it. Joining me now is North Dakota Senator Kevin Kramer. Uh, Senator, this is extraordinary. And I, I just want to play from ABC. I think this was uh, just yesterday on ABC, one of their Sunday programs, acknowledging that, that the Harris team is stealing shots of Donald Trump's border wall, claiming it's their their efforts that made it happen. Roll tape. But if you take a look at that ad, one thing that I found striking is if you look, and I think we have the, uh, the images here, there are at least three points in that ad that show the, bo- the border wall, Donald Trump's border wall. Is it now the position of the Democrats that they favor the border wall? Senator, what do you make of this? Well... Given her history as a United States senator, first of all, where she pledged to stop any funding for Donald Trump's border wall and the fact that the only responsibility she was ever given as vice president was to solve the border crisis, it's unserious and unbelievable. However, David, if in fact she is able to convince people that she's for the border wall and, and for stopping illegal immigration, she runs as much if not more risk of offending the lunatic left as she does of convincing you know, reasonable moderates in swing states. The whole thing makes her look silly. But, you know, the, she said these things in the past, supposedly because right. she had an inclination toward believing them. But but to go so far in reverse, I mean, remember in the debate when she was still in 2020, we were still one of the contenders for the Democratic nomination. She raised her hand as fast as anybody else before her and right. saying she was for complete welfare for anything that the immigrants coming across wanted. Uh, has she changed her mind on that? Because that acts as a magnet to pull more migrants in. Well, and therein lies the problem, right? Because she's been inconsistent on other things as well. But remember, John Kerry was for it before he was against it. So she's going to have to say she was against it before she was for it. And all of that just raises questions more about, frankly, her character than it does about her position. We all love a good redemption story. I like a good conversion story. (laughs) But this was a little hard to believe. Yeah, I've I've converted to things in my life, but it's uh, and it, and it happens. But you just you don't. It doesn't happen on a dime. I mean, it, it takes years That's and right. years for it to happen. And a lot of people just believe her heart is in a different place than what she's talking about. And energy, of course, near and dear to your heart as a, as a senator right. from North Dakota, is part of it all. Her fracking. She she was as clear as 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 she could possibly be. She said there is no question. I'm in favor of banning fracking. And now it's not put out by her, by the way. Some of her aides have whispered it to to journalists that she says she's actually in favor of fracking. I mean, she's got to be called out on these issues. Well, therein lies the big problem, right? And once we get past Labor Day now and, you know, now that the DNC is over and the scrutiny hopefully becomes a little clearer and a little bit more uh, aggressive with her, she has to be called out on these things. The fact that she hasn't done a significant interview and no news conferences for, what, 36, 37, 38 days uh, tells you that she's going to try to avoid further explanation because as long as it's somebody else, a spokesperson or an unnamed source within the campaign that's whispering these things, you can sort of believe what you want about her. The problem, David, is we don't live in a time like that anymore. We live in a time when there's a lot of information available to yes. voters. They know how to get your positions, assuming you have a position. So I think the not having a position or being vague about position becomes the position. And I think it it speaks to the lack of real ability to be a, a leader that's believable. But the voters, particularly in, in, in oil-heavy states or states where fracking right. is, is Pennsylvania is a perfect example. That is a real Real right. boy, uh, a case where it could go in either direction right now, but they there are 123,000 jobs in Pennsylvania that depend on fracking and the oil business in general. Seventy-five billion dollars in economic activity. I don't know how how many jobs in North Dakota depend on fracking. Well, a whole bunch of them, David. And and just remember this: that it's not just the the direct jobs in the fracking industry, if you will. It's everything you know across the entire economy. The the whole value chain is dependent on this one technology that works. And by the way, there is not a state in the United States of America that doesn't have some part 
of the supply chain and the That's value right. chain in oil and gas development. And at the very least, everybody uses the product, whether they know it or not. They use gas, Absolutely. they use oil, they use gasoline. Can't avoid so it. anyway. Senator Kramer, great yeah. to see you. Thank you so much for being here. Appreciate it. More Cudlow right after this. <laughs> 